Government Order of the Day number four. Government Notice of Motion number four. The Honourable Jerry Brownlee. Uh, Mr Speaker, I move that the House do now adjourn until 2pm on Tuesday, the 8th of February 2011, and that the House adopt the 2011 sitting programme set out in Government Notice of Motion number four in my name. Mr Speaker, this has been a very interesting year. Before I make any reflective comments on that, uh, I would like to first, uh, sir, thank you for your uh, presidence over this House uh, and uh, along with your presiding officers uh, for the way in which you have um, ensured that we do operate in a way that uh, is fitting for a parliament of this nature. Uh, that is greatly appreciated not only by members of the House but also uh, many, as you are no doubt aware, outside of the House as well. Uh, thank you for that and we wish you a, um, a restful festive season uh, and all the best for 2011. Can I also thank the messengers, the security staff, the Hansard staff, everyone in the clerk's office, including particularly uh, Mary Harris, the clerk, who has served us so well again for one more year. Uh, for those who are on PTO, uh, the House staff who look after us here in the House, the Bellamy staff, uh, who I particularly appreciate, VIP drivers, my, uh, my electorate office staff, my ministerial office staff, ministerial services, parliamentary services, uh, and the DPS and the many others who make this place work, including all of those who clean our offices uh, during the evenings uh, and keep the grounds looking tidy outside. Mr Speaker, we wish them all a uh, happy and festive, season, happy, uh, festive Christmas season uh, and all the best for 2011. Mr Speaker, <clears throat> this year, 2010, uh, has to say the least been an interesting one. Uh, not only has the government been able to progress an awful lot of legislation, We've also had to deal with two uh, very unsavoury incidents that uh, have affected the lives of many, many New Zealanders. Well, I, I'll take that back. You're right to say the word is not appropriate, uh, not unsavoury, but uh, um, difficult and tragic, difficult and tragic uh, uh, incidents that we've had to deal with. The first is the Canterbury earthquake, of course, uh, where there were so many people displaced uh, for a short time but then got back in their homes once they realised they were safe. Uh, that sort of incident, to put it into scale, uh, is the fourth biggest earthquake incident uh, insurance-wise since 1970. Uh, it is the third biggest insurance payout for any disaster this year. So it, is a, it has a magnitude to it that is quite considerable. And it's interesting when you look at um, other earthquakes of its size, uh, totally miraculous that no one died. And that was a function, sir, I think, of not only the building code, as we mentioned so many times, but also the time of day that it occurred. Uh, a similar event, sir, in, in uh, uh, Kobe killed some 6,500 people, and then in other events of similar size, it's run to hundreds of thousands, Mr Speaker. So some, I guess, uh, satisfaction that uh, we were prepared well enough to avoid that loss of life, but uh, the loss of property and the restoration of that property is going to take quite some time. Mr Speaker, then there is the incident... Uh, at the, or the, the terrible tragedy at Pike River on the west coast that certainly uh, touched the hearts of all New Zealanders. Um, it was very raw for people because they could see uh, night by night on the television uh, that there were people who were in a dreadful situation, not of their own making, uh, and quite unable to be helped. And that unfortunately continues. Uh, and our, our best wishes, our hearts uh, go out to the families who will have a lonely Christmas this year. Uh, but I think the words that the uh, Right Honourable John Key offered uh, to particularly the mothers of the children who are affected there at the memorial service uh, will be of some comfort to them, although precious little, in fact, Mr Speaker. Uh, Mr Speaker, <clears throat> I don't want to sound trivial, but uh, there have been other disasters this year as well, and one of those would have to be uh, the incredibly poor poll showing of our opponents on the other side of the House. And uh, I know that they're calling, me, they're calling on me now to stay as a statesman and keep talking in these uh, sort of general, broad and above the issue terms, but uh, I think it only appropriate that we record the fact that uh, this has been a year that has been an abject disaster for the Labour Party. Abject disaster for the Labour Party. It started, I think, started to become apparent how bad it was when their communications plan was revealed earlier this year. Uh, where Claire Curran was attempting to present Phil Goff as fresh, as funky and as forward-looking. And from there, I think it has just slowly gone downhill. But perhaps it got to its crescendo 
when there was their dreadful confusion over whether or not New Zealand should have supported the Hobbit movies uh, remaining a, a production in New Zealand. Mr Speaker, I think it's sad that a party that once claimed to be uh, the doyens of the creative side of New Zealand uh, could have lost it in such a way. And I would suggest that some of the uh, members on the other side might want to spend some time over the Christmas holidays, perhaps getting in touch with their creative side. I would suggest that Mr Hodgson goes back to Dunedin and gets in touch with uh, Mr Taylor and his unit down there and makes a little programme called Dunedin CSI, uh, which he could, of course, star in. He's shown his credentials in that way in recent weeks. I, I would suggest that going back to... Uh, going back to uh, well, going back to uh, South Auckland, uh, Mr Goff might like to get hold of some of those production houses. He is a perfect leading man, a perfect leading man for a remake of Cold Case. And then, of course, there is um, his, uh, his nemesis, uh, Mr Cunliffe, or Cagle, depending on what day of the week it is. But Mr Cagle is a guy I think would be perfect for a starring role in The Mentalist, although I understand from his office that he's also considering the lead part in Two and a Half Men. <laughs> Mr Speaker, Shane Jones, the self-confessed movie buff, is going to make a, a new feature film known as uh, A Mighty Totra Rises Again. This, is a, this, of course, would be a sequel to his well-known classic, uh, Hung Parliament. Mr Speaker, Clayton Cosgrove might like to uh, do something with the title of WWF. Uh, all bluff, all bluster, lots of lycra and absolutely no winners there. And then, of course, Mr Speaker, we know that one of the most creative people in the Labour Party is Trevor Mallard. It has to be conceded, very creative. You look at those blogs, you look at those blogs, and there he is out there, a poor man's David Farrer, making up, making up all and everything you could possibly imagine to try and indicate that he's on top of the job. Much easier sitting in front of a little piece of, of what do they call those things, keyboards, and, um, and making it up, but actually doing any work. Well, well, look, I don't mind. I don't mind admitting I'm a bit behind the, the times. I see he's got an iPad there. You don't need a thing with that. But uh, 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 one of the highlights for the year for me was to uh, be confronted with my advancing years, Mr. Speaker, when I spoke to the youth parliament and suggested to them that uh, when I was younger we didn't have such wonderful things that they, of course, enjoy, like Sonny Walkmans. Mr. Speaker, I can assure you that brought the house down because there wasn't a single person in that youth parliament that was born at the time the Sonny Walkman was a popular item for people to carry around. Mr Speaker, yes, yeah, Sonny Walkman, yes, that's right. You're a young man too, Simon. The, um, in the end, it's that lack of experience that's holding you back. But anyway, um, can I just say to our coalition partners, it's been a delight to work with you this year. Uh, yeah, no, it has, truly. And um, if I had more time, I'd go into some of the delights of, of discussions with Rodney and Roger and... Heather, it's been fantastic, and Rahui, you know, our discussions, I've loved them, thank you. And um, I do hope that you enjoy the, uh, the Christmas season and have a great new year. I finally want to acknowledge the Prime Minister, the Right Honourable John Key, for his extraordinary leadership of this nation. Uh, and the uh, fact is, Mr Speaker, that leadership is not only endorsed by his, um, his own party, uh, by the coalition partners who work with him, but also large numbers of New Zealanders uh, who, who, who are very, very supportive of his style uh, and the leadership that he's showing for this country. Mr Speaker, uh, to all of my constituents in Ireland, thank you for your forbearance this year. It's been a difficult one um, and uh, I, uh, I look forward to 2011 and continuing beyond that election to serve that great electorate. Thank you, Mr Speaker.